I wonder what would have happened to us had we not got out when we did. Our security was being pulled. Everyone in the world knew where we were. I said, we need to get out of here. We are on the freedom flight. To see this institutional gaslighting. But I wasn't being thrown to the wolves. I was being fed to the wolves. They were actively recruiting people to disseminate disinformation. They were happy to lie to protect my brother. They were never willing to tell the truth to protect us. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The rogue royals. They just wanted to be free. They wanted to be free to love and be happy. I applauded that. In order for us to be able to move to the next chapter, you got to finish the first chapter. It gave us a chance to create that home that we had always wanted. I've always felt as though this was a fight worth fighting for. Wow. What do you make of that? Well, he's brainwashed, but it, Megan's very clever. I mean, don't think for a moment that she's not convincing quite a lot of people, especially in America and in uh, Africa and the Caribbean and elsewhere, that somehow she was thrown to the wolves. Of course, that's completely untrue because she had all the time Scotland Yard protecting her and all the time people uh, speaking on her behalf. So it's a complete lie that she's uh, perpetuating. But I do think they're convincing. I think that people will believe this confection produced by Hollywood. But the point that I really think is important to put to them is, and to, Hollywood, and to Netflix for creating this farage of lies, is who is they? Who actually mm -hmm. threw them to the wall, walls? Who actually was not prepared to tell the truth on their behalf? I mean, it's a complete fiction. It's worse than a fiction. It's actually damaging and corrosive. Because in that case you mentioned, that which uh, Meghan brought in London against the tabloids, it's quite clear that the, her staff in Buckingham Palace were doing everything they could to help her, were doing everything they could to lie on her behalf. That is what's so astonishing. And, of course, she lied when she told the British High Court that she had not cooperated in telling her own lies, that it was all a mystery to her. And that's what's so terrible, that the more she lies, the more credibility she's getting. And that's thanks the, to Netflix and the Hollywood producers. And Harry, we are going to is part of it. We are going to hear who they are, as outlined in that trailer, 100%. And they've already telegraphed, it, it, they is the royal family. In the first three series, Harry comes out and says, oh, there's the leaking of stories, meaning by the palace, that the press wouldn't be the leakers. It's the it's the the principles. Um, the, the the royal family leaks, and also the planting of stories. And he is absolutely getting ready to say in this next three episodes that the palace and its staffers, courtiers, whatever, were planting negative stories on him and her. That's what she means, I think, clearly by they threw me to the wolves or they fed me to the wolves. By the way, it's the same thing. Um, that they were going to be the dumping ground for negative stories while William and Kate were protected and that they were not protected. In fact, to the contrary, negative hit pieces were planted on them by their own family. So how is the palace likely to deal with that? Well, it was great difficulty because, of course, they're lying. They, they themselves created the bad press by behaving so irrationally and so hypocritically, like, for example, refusing to visit the Queen in Balmoral on the grounds that Archie was too young to fly and then flying off to meet George Clooney, uh, George Clooney in the Mediterranean and, 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 and Elton John. I mean, they're the, they're the cause of their own bad publicity and the bad stories. They created them by their, their dishonest um, per, 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 um, performance. But the real problem is that I don't think silence will silence them anymore by the Royal Palace. The Royal Palace is going to have to uh, come out and give their version because... The only way the Sussexes can earn their living is by carrying on regurgitating their moans and complaints and lies. And the only way for the palace in the end to silence it is to give a version of the truth. However much I can say that the Sussexes are not telling the truth, that will not silence them. It'll have to be something very, very sim simple, but effective. And I think William is the, uh, the mouthpiece for the royal family. Uh, and he needs to talk soon. 
What do you make of the relationship now between these brothers? I heard you on with Dan Wooten on GB News saying Diana would be horrified at what her one son is doing to the other, not to mention to Prince to King Charles now at the beginning of his reign. I mean, he's really trying to sabotage the whole thing from the look of it. What do you th- yes. what do you make of the relationship well, between it, the boys? It, it's a tragedy, and of course, it's very very damaging. It's very damaging for Britain's reputation across the world because the one thing which everyone associates with Britain is the royal family. But you see, the point is that this is Meghan's plan all along, was that she had to be famous. And when she discovered <clears throat> that the royal family is led by the Queen and not by Meghan, that is when she decided she was getting out. And now she is setting herself up as the Queen of Montecito. She is setting herself up as the person who will speak on behalf of the exiled royals. And she doesn't care how much damage she's creating. Because after all, remember how she's treated her father, how she treated her first husband, how she treated her best friends from school. She is a person who is totally destructive when it comes to promoting herself. So I think there's a lot more bloodshed to come in this battle. And of course, the relationship between Harry and William is one of the casualties. Oliver the Ornament is a seven-book series about one family's collection of ornaments. The first book begins Thanksgiving night, while the last book takes place on Christmas morning. Each book introduces a new holiday ornament and weaves in the story of that ornament. It's a good idea, right? Super cute for the whole family. The books teach kindness, and they have lots of plot twists and cliffhangers. This is a great tradition for your entire family. Parents, grandparents, kids, grandkids, they're all going to look forward to the next family story night. It's a nice way to get everybody together. Maybe some hot cocoa mixed in, maybe a warm fire. Maybe some eggnog for the grown-ups. It's great for the holiday season. Oliver the Ornament has won all kinds of awards and accolades. First Lady Melania Trump selected this book to be read at Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C., continuing a 75-year-long tradition. Go to olivertheornament.com today. Olivertheornament.com today. Hit the big Shop Now button on the page, and when you buy the Oliver the Ornament set, you're going to get a whole bunch of extra goodies, including audiobooks. Use the code Megan at checkout, Oliver the Ornament, O-R-N-A-M-E-N-T dot com. Use code Megan at checkout. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.